Okay, well, H Bomber Guy, <laughs> aka Harry. That's my name. You have to address me as my this terrible. I, I have to. I have to. It's it's the law because you've done an internet thing, which means I've got to address you by your internet moniker. That's what that's mm. what people younger than me tell me you have to do. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it doesn't help that sort of a lot of the work I do prior to um, this, I, I operate under a sort of persona where I've kind of invented a character who I play in my work who's distinct from who I am. So, uh, I mean, who are you at the moment? Like? My actual name is Harry Brewis. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm streaming under that name because I, I guess it, it felt disingenuous to, to, to continue you know, playing a persona when this stuff happened. Um, but Harris Bomber Guy, the character, is... Um, the person I play in a lot of um, the videos that I make where I'm sort of trying to... Um, I like to bring people in, in on a joke. So if I play a character who's obviously flawed in their own way, it makes it sort of draws people in and it sort of, I think, helps make people feel involved in whatever's happening. So I really want to talk about that and like how people create personas, particularly through streaming platforms, create a sense of community. Oh my God, that is ginormous. Sorry, yeah. Um, is, that, is that like a character element or is that just... The normal amount of water you you drink. Um, I heard once a very long time ago, you should always drink far more water than you think. And I think, oh, that'll make my complexion much nicer. My skin will be great. It just makes you need to go to the bathroom all the time. I was in the bathroom when you called me to say this was ready to go. I mean, you could have like streamed, I think, whilst on the loo, and it would felt it would have felt intimate. <laughs> you know, I, I I actually the first thing I, I filmed for the new video is a uh, Gillette razor in the toilet. Um, I'm doing a piece about the. Uh, response to the Gillette commercial. I'm not sure if you've... Yeah, I mean, so that, does that mean that you had to put your hand in your toilet to retrieve the razor? Yes, that's the, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to reenact the guy who took a picture of his razor in the toilet <laughs> and then, you know, reenact the seconds after where he realised he had to either actually flush his razor or take it out. <laughs> There's one question that we ask of the guy, right? Which is like, was it worth it that you, you, you touch your own diluted feces or you ruin your plumbing but then is it worth it for you to either ruin your plumbing or touch diluted excrement to send up the guy who also was faced with that choice or did you have like a litter picker to like be able to do it at a distance or chopsticks that's a that's a really good no no i just put my hand in no (laughs) No, I'm kicking myself about that, but uh, it made for it made for hilarious internet video content, and I, of course, ha- I g- could plan ahead, so I got to pre pre scrub my toilet. Um, oh, that's useful. That's better. That's better than when I dropped my phone down the toilet, which. Oh yeah, I recently threw my phone in the toilet for a, for a different video. I've I've had I've got a lot of use out of out of Armitage Shanks. I I should get sponsored by them. That might be. I was going to say, ultimately, do you think the internet has been good for you? I mean, let's. Go back to your marathon Donkey Kong extravaganza. Like, how's how's your brain doing after that much Donkey Kong? Um, it's hard returning back to reality. Uh, sometimes when I shut my eyes, I briefly see a flash of a blue cartoon beaver <laughs> um, taunting me. I don't think that'll ever go away. I felt like if I if I I would stop having nightmares about Donkey Kong if I could if I could just beat the game finally. But no, it was like a form of immersion therapy. There's a website uh, called speedruns.com.net. I forget which one. There's a speedrunning website that records the fastest everyone's beaten a lot of different games and a lot of different categories, different ways of beating them. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to beat the game so completely that I got on that list? And I did it in one sitting, so um, it can't be... It can't be disputed. Everyone saw it. And then it's like I actually did it. Like, it, I finally really finished this this thing. But it can't go on the leaderboard because uh, I, I technically used the wrong um, hardware. So, no! uh, Which means that next year we have to do it again. Uh, we have to do it on the on the real hardware. And maybe this time I'll, I'll, uh, I'll run the stream properly. And, and, you know, the whole thing was, it was a total mess. Um, my friend uh, Pio is their name. Uh, went out of the, they they started a server for other people to come in and to to sort of arrange the calls and stuff. And a lot of people kind of dawned on people faster than me that my fun thing I was going to do for I expect about six people was becoming an event without me realizing it. I kind of turned off my brain so I wouldn't panic. I mean, I guess you have to like get into like a meditative state for like that much Donkey Kong, but. I mean, it became huge. It was a phenomenon. When you realise a lot of people are watching something and you're making ten times, or perhaps even more than that, the amount of money you ever expected to make. Uh, Me and my friend Sean, who gave me the idea to do this, we did a charity thing uh, last year at at Halloween. 
and uh, we raised about three thousand uh, pounds for a uh, special effect, which is a charity for disabled people. And I thought it's going to be about that big. And I kind of prepared myself for the long haul of doing this for hours and hours and hours with barely anyone watching, and just you know, at least at least I'll, I'd have done it. And when it hit me that people actually were watching and people were donating. You know, when we'd passed my 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 first goal of five hundred dollars before I was done apologizing for starting late, <laughs> uh, I realized I you know I part of me went oh this is I this, this is more than I prepared and then that bit went away and someone else started handling all the difficult jobs of actually getting guests in. I mean, so stuff. why do you think it it became so huge? Like I was reading um, a bit of coverage about it and one of the and what the author was arguing was that there's a certain power in fuck that guy in particular that. There was yeah. the first motivation, which was obviously solidarity, particularly for like very vulnerable trans teenagers, trans kids. But then also this element of like, you know what, there's so much internet nastiness around this sort of anti-trans backlash that being able to say fuck that guy in particular felt good. Yeah, I think it was one of those things where it, Graham Linehan is almost a cipher. Um, he's he's awful, but he's also just, uh, he's, he's, he's almost... It doesn't exist. He's this empty vessel upon which we can use to talk about a much wider and deeper problem. Um, Graham doesn't even think he's transphobic because you know he, he he's got at least two trans friends, uh, so obviously there's no problem there. But uh, his like kind of saying I'm not misogynist. My wife's a woman. Like... Yeah, my wife's. <laughs> basically that so me me when i say you know when i say fuck you graham i don't literally just mean it although i do it i'm also saying hey this thing is bad and it's okay to say it is so i think really i gave everyone who already did feel that way an excuse to say it i think sometimes people feel like they need a reminder that it's okay um if that makes sense so what what do you make of the anti-trans backlash? Because one of the things that I find quite confusing is other than the specifics of the GRA, is that a lot of the sort of legal safeguards and rights for trans people have been secured years ago. So the discussion over toilets and changing rooms is already years out of date. And it seems to be that now, um, particularly I think with the editorial uh, line that the Times has taken, the editorial that was published by The Guardian, then this sort of online coterie of famous for doing other things and are now prominent transphobes. Why do you think that's come together at this time? I think uh, what's happened essentially is um, people who are, let's not say right wing, but are regressive, uh, or it's a bit of a, um, it's saying the same thing twice there really, uh, but the uh, are always trying to find a new way to articulate their bad ideas. Uh, I find that it's it's we've reached a point now where it's you're not allowed to say that stuff about gay people. You're not allowed to say, would you would you would you let a gay man in a bathroom with your child? You're not allowed to say that anymore. Um, so they have to find someone else to target with those um, with those beliefs. Uh, a lot of people on the stream, I had a lot of trans guests on, said the uh, this is a wedge issue to try and separate the LGBT community. And a lot of people who really want to feel like they're they're being the good feminists will get on board behind convincing sounding arguments that you know that they're coming to 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 into the bathroom with your kids. Um, and so that that gets people riled up, and it doesn't really matter what the truth is or, or 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 respect. These things go out of the window, and it becomes I'm being the best feminist by trying to defund a charity to, that helps children. Um, if effectively, it's a trick by people who are even worse than Graham to get Graham on their side, and it's worked. And um, I, there was a very funny moment where uh, Graham said something very rude and aggressive to one of the guests on my stream, and they re replied to him on Twitter with, Hi, Piers Morgan, I love your work. <laughs> and that was uh, Lindsay uh, Ellis, who uh, is an awesome YouTuber who kind of helped set all this up, mm -hmm. um, along with a lot of other people who I'll, I'm going to insist on listing. <laughs> yeah, no, name drop, name drop away. Um, and that kind of highlights the point of this, which is, trans issues by way of being kind of the next thing after sort of homophobia or racism are a way of bringing back in all of these arguments and finding a new audience in the form of people who think that they're being progressive by doing it um I but mean, it's not working you know it, it, graham has kind of accidentally done amazing promotion for this issue by being so obviously wrong so inarticulate and so angry that 
it becomes incredibly obvious where the truth is. So I, I do genuinely want to say thanks, Graham, for like helping get attention on this issue. You also made a bit of a name for yourself through debunking. So your sort of measured response um, format for, you know, taking a claim and investigating it and taking something that's absurd and then plumbing it to the very depths of its absurdity. And one of the things that has been coming up again and again with mermaids has been this sort of, you know, conspiratorial, this is what they're really doing. Yeah, um, you yeah. know, they're trying to force children into uh, taking puberty blockers, hormonal therapy, surgery, uh, before they can make informed decisions about their bodies. So do you have debunking for that stuff well this is one of the things that uh, makes my job very hard is you have to you have to figure out when the evidence is the point when you have to debunk it and then people will go oh i was wrong and when that's not the point and the point is they want to believe they're right and no matter how much you argue the evidence uh it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter that was never really the point and you see that a lot with with for example with graham you can see a lot of um geneticists or biologists or psychologists contacting graham to say actually uh puberty isn't reversible but if you block puberty and then you change your mind you can go through it again afterwards you just stop taking the puberty blockers it's fine it's how the body works he will ignore that never respond to it until he finds another doctor with worse credentials who says i don't think so i've got a degree in economics and i think you know uh, or robert robert webb reckons <laughs> but um he will step over all of these people this pool of knowledgeable people correcting him to say look at this trans person who called me a turf that's a slur look at this Look at this person with a beard coming to get me, uh, because that's that's the only way to message being this wrong. Um, so to to actually say let's get into the weeds of the evidence is missing the point. Um, however, or I, I looked into it obviously before I decided to, to come out in support of a charity. Uh, almost all of the things they bring up are just very clearly doing digging to sort of position this charity which basically provides support to children and their families it's literally just advice for parents who don't know any of this stuff when their kid starts talking to them about it um they're just looking at any event where they can possibly go look at this look at this horrible thing they did uh, there was a, a judge who really overstepped the mark in their ruling in the comments they made um so they can go well look here's a judge saying what we want them to say when that's just someone else reckoning it's nothing to do with the truth or 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 the biology of it all um and having known people who who knew they were trans from a very young age um there being more of a discussion and more availability of this information so that people uh, can actually think about this stuff is, is tremendously useful but if you think uh, trans people are fake and it's all imaginary, then this strikes you as um, children being tricked into thinking they're trans when they're actually not. But the truth is actually the complete opposite. People are now more free than ever to discover the truth about themselves because we're finally talking about it. Trans people have been around for a very long time, but they've not been very visible and the discussion has not been there for so long. And it's happening now and people are perceiving it as, look at all the... Suddenly there's all these trans people. No. They were always there, and a lot of them didn't even really know it. Um, yeah. I mean, one of the really beautiful things about the stream and what I was able to do, and I didn't think that I would call Donkey Kong beautiful, but, but Donkey Kong is beautiful, was that it sort of was full of these surprises of like who turns out to be an ally, because it seems to me that when you exist on the internet, you're always just like, oh no, that they're a transphobe and it's always just the sort of like unpleasant like oh okay you know and it always seems to be people that were involved in comedies like 20 you know 20 years ago uh, don't know why that's sort of an incubator of like transphobia but then it's like you know um aoc you've got like you know voice of donkey kong himself you've got the guy behind doom coming out and you know coming out uh, for for trans liberation for trans rights did did you realize that was the scale of support that was out there on this issue? That was the thing that when we... I actually started to cry at one point when I realised how wrong I'd been. I, I'd assumed, oh, maybe a couple of people would retweet it, but no one really no one really cares that much. Uh, and I, I'd, pre I'd been prepared for a very depressing and very long evening. And at some point it hit me that I'd been completely off the mark. 
and there were so many people who'd basically been waiting for an excuse to support a charity and do good for people, and a lot of people had thought about this and cared, and that really, I did, I did almost break down at one point. Um, but I, I hadn't expected any of it, but it's really wonderful knowing. We also had uh, Josh Sawyer came on, we had uh, people who worked on uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band come on and say, we exist, we're here, it's not just allies, there are people who are trans in the industry, all over the place, and uh, they've always been there. And that's been really, it's been nice knowing that there are so many people who, who actually do care. Because we tend to think of gamer culture as something which is broadly aligned with the alt-right. And I'm actually, I'm like the most technophobic person on the planet. Like, I'm like an auntie who's like having to navigate a phone, like she's finding the whole thing um, terrifying. And one of the things that I find in, in particular quite terrifying is YouTube. Um, you know, Navarra has been trying to make more of a presence on YouTube and it's where I go if I feel I need to reduce my self-esteem by like 30% <laughs> by reading like 100 comments on how I need to shave my moustache. But you've been a part of, and not just yourself, but you know, lots of the names that you've been dropping have been part of trying to engineer like a bit of an insurgency. I mean, what, how do you go about doing that? What's the value of gaming and doing that? What's the value of streaming and doing that? I think sometimes people need a chance to realize that games are never just about games. Uh, we find games interesting because they reflect our lives and they reflect real issues and they're a chance for us to think about things in new ways. Uh, I, uh, a lot, I, know, I didn't get into any of this to be political or change culture. I got into this to talk about stuff that I happen to enjoy. And it t turns out that if you take an even slightly gestalt approach to a topic and say, well, this also is it deals with this 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 is this is what a game has to say about dialectics or here is um here's here's what a piece of media has to say about our society you reach a point where suddenly um you're getting people to think about a topic in a way they hadn't before i think the right exists very strongly on youtube partially because they're incredibly well funded uh the coke brothers have given millions of dollars to a lot of people to ensure that they have a very established presence pushing for um, f freer markets and uh, worse healthcare. But I mean, it's, it's kind of strange, right? Like, it's sort of, what do we like? We like white supremacy. Um, we like, um, you know, forcing trans people out of public life. But also we like people having the freedom to, you know, smoke themselves into lung cancer and then not have the healthcare to deal with it. That's the sort of array of political positions yeah that's the it's it's a very interesting kind of, of freedom and you see it revealed when uh my, my go-to example right now is when jerry seinfeld told i think it was seinfeld it might have been jerry springer no it was jerry seinfeld told a joke uh in at a university campus and no one laughed and it wasn't a very funny joke it wasn't anything to do with political correctness i forget what it was it was like some it was what's the deal with airplane food 2.0 no one laughed and in, you could see on his face oh oh, am I not funny? No, it's them. And from then on, he was very, you know, anti-political correctness. And the lesson there is that th you know, when they say, oh, we should be free to tell whatever jokes we want, they actually are. What they want is is this new freedom, the freedom to be laughed at and told you're funny even when you're not, um, which is a very bizarre freedom they don't realise is actually a little bit uh, secretly fascist, but, you yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, it's not freedom, right? It's power. Yeah, you, you want you want you want the the, f the freedom to always win, <laughs> and that's the that's the mindset that millionaires get into. They think that freedom's being infringed upon if you can't you know pay someone to knock their own teeth out, uh, <laughs> or if you or if you can't uh, crush unions or something like that. But but there's a sort of like a whole band of people who aren't millionaires. I mean, I don't think Sargon of Akkad or Carl of Swindon, whatever we're calling him, is. A millionaire. It's just this sort of these guys who are who are obsessed temporarily with temporarily embarrassed millionaire, obviously working <laughs> working their way up. Um, and but on top of that, when when you have a lot of when you have a lot of media out there that's run by people with a specific uh, agenda or mindset, then you're going to get that mindset replicating itself, even in the people who don't benefit at all from that system. I've met a lot of people who benefit from uh, marginal tax rates worried that if they somehow one day make a lot of or worry about the estate tax um uh 
whether they're worried that if they at some point own a house, which they never will because they're millennials, they're worried that if they die, that the kids, the theoretical kids might have to pay taxes on it. And that's because people have invested in making sure that's what you're worried about and not your rights. Um, I think the the power of YouTube is that it, it, you can't control it. It is in a way free. So eventually ideas do develop and you get people like like ContraPoints or like uh, Sean or Philosophy Tube um, and to a, or, or Three Arrows over in Germany or to a much lesser extent me who are going, we, this stuff is obviously wrong and we can actually point it out. And then because the truth does, you know, can't actually be escaped no matter how much you pay or how hard you put your fingers in your ears, Graham. Um, it starts to develop. And I think the recent growth hasn't been us doing anything particularly clever. Um, I'm not clever at all. I played Donkey Kong for hours. That's literally all I did. Um, what's happening is is all the people who were always there are going, oh, wait, hang on. I can think a bit more about this. And that's all it, that's all it really takes, I think. I mean, I think there's just something about the combination of like the simplicity of what you did you just played donkey kong for ages and it's got this like tie i think for loads of us because of nostalgia like i remember playing it with like my cousins and um it's also kind of you know non-threatening like i don't think you could have done it with goldeneye well then maybe next time you could do it with goldeneye i was thinking what do i stream tonight because t tonight's one of the nights i normally stream i was thinking i could just play counter strike and just hang out uh, but that's actually sort of not a fun game to watch people play. I'm very lucky that Donkey Kong is a very child-friendly game. It's very quiet. Um, it was a fun fact. Uh, Donkey Kong originally had guns in it, and they replaced them with fruit because they thought that would be sort of more uh, on brand. And I think that kind of attitude, the kind of let's build an environment that is still... Stuff still happens. It's still violent, but it's it's safe. It's fruit. Um I think that's the kind of attitude I wanted to endeavour in it, where it, it's theoretically a spiteful stream. Ah, let's let's get Graham. But what it really is, is let's talk about these issues in a way and help some people. It was really about mermaids. It was never really about Graham. What's the response of Graham been? Uh, the response has been, uh, to paraphrase, uh, this isn't an exact quote, I am completely off my rocker, please give more money to mermaids. Uh, he just said it in a very bizarre way by just screaming at everyone who came out in support of trans people. Um, I can't help but feel very sorry for his imaginary assistant. Yes, I, I feel incredibly sorry. Like, part of me in my head is is thinking of the, the strategy, the optics of the situation. Part of me wants to genuinely say, stop tweeting, Graham. If you genuinely want to stop, like, if you don't want to make this any worse, stop advertising for us. You know, that's all you have to do. But he's, he seems dedicated to helping the trans community by making a complete ass of himself. And, you know, thanks, but I don't think that's what you wanted. So, like, you know, what you're saying is essentially, like, Graham Linehan, sleeper agent in <laughs> turf Twitter, comrade Graham. There's this great television show, which I think he might have heard of, called Father Ted. And there's an episode called uh, The Passion of St. Tibulus that's about um, the, 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 the fathers. They come out and they, they protest against a film that's playing that's apparently very controversial. And their protest makes it the most popular film to ever play in that theatre. And he, he seems to have forgotten the plot of his story where, you know, he's he's the one doing it like it's it's this perfect storm of like this is a script the clever man Gr graham linehan used to be um would would have written now if if he had any sense left but i think when you get this committed to a cause even when it turns out you're wrong you have to keep going you know graham is now locked in but we can get all of his uh all of his fans all the people who actually are open-minded and like it's been very, very fun going to um, uh, Twitter and checking his follow account and watching it go down, watching his people go, I can't stand this anymore. You know, I followed you because I liked uh, Black Books or the IT crowd, but but at this point, it's not worth it, you know? Uh, that's been very, very fun to watch. Um, I think that the thing that, that got highlighted, the, the sort of perhaps the, the, the most fun moment of the stream for me, uh, it wasn't asking a sitting congresswoman uh, how to beat how to turn on the factory in Donkey Kong. It was when someone mentioned uh, a GoFundMe page that they were funding for a wheelchair. And when they looked back about 10 minutes later, they'd, they'd, they'd made past the goal. 
uh, I realise that there are so many people out there for whom a, what is a very small amount of money could radically change their life. And there's a, there's a hashtag on, on Twitter right now. It's trans crowdfund. And it's people saying, hey, this much money would make a tremendous difference. It would help me get to a safe place or, um, or, or get out of a bad situation, stuff like that. And um, that's the, the main thing I, I want to bring up is the work has to continue. Um, and I don't think it, I don't think it'll stop. I, I think I think people have begun to wake up to just how much good they can do. And that's really, really excellent. Um, Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a really fun interview to conduct. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's no. really lovely of you to, 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 to approach me to do this. And you've been you've been really great. Thank you. No, no, no. It's sick. Just like next time, can you do like fifty-seven hours of Donkey Kong for Navarra? Like, I mean, can we, what we could, what we could do with half a mil? Someone has to try to destroy you first. So, Graham, can you try to destroy Navarra Media next?